If you are like me, uh, over the weeks of the pandemic, I'm pretty sure you have gone through at least a dozen of these hand sanitizer bottles, right? Uh, ranging everything from uh, a branded product to uh, these from from questionable sources, let's say. And here's the thing, you, you don't need a huge fancy startup or a production line to make your own hand sanitizer. Uh, WHO has taken out a very nice document uh, that gives you an, uh, a composition of an effective hand sanitizer uh, that any enterprise uh, can make on their own. And if you want to try that, you certainly can uh, do that at home as well. Having said that, I generally don't recommend that you stop buying store-bought hand sanitizer if you if it is available in your neighborhood shop and uh, if you're willing to pay the price, by all means, go ahead. However, uh, if you want to save, if you're like me, you want to save a few bucks or the hand sanitizer that you're looking for is not available, uh, then I think this is an effective alternative. To make an effective hand sanitizer, you just require three ingredients. Well, actually four, but the fourth one is just plain water. Uh, the vital, the most important ingredient that you require is a source of lower alcohol. It can be either ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol, I don't recommend because uh, it's the same alcohol that you have in your hard drinks. Never drink any alcohol unless it's meant for drinking, okay? Uh, if you have to drink alcohol, stick to whiskey and rum, I think. Uh, so having said that, uh, ethyl alcohol uh, is a heavily taxed substance in most part of the world and uh, especially if you're in the Middle East or for example in the Indian state of Gujarat, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a controlled substance. So uh, if you try to get ethyl alcohol in bulk, uh, you might end up getting a fake product. So don't do that, stick to isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I got this from Amazon. Uh, uh, when you buy these, this is specifically, this is 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you have to buy it online, stay away from the, 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 how to put this, the household sellers which sell uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol in nice small bottles uh, without any certification. Uh, don't buy those, they're super expensive uh, and they're of questionable origin. The hack here is to buy it from a certified laboratory supplier, okay? It's going to be a lot cheaper and you know you're getting the right product and not a fake product. So that's my primary ingredient. The other two ingredients that WHO uh, points out is uh, glycerin or glycerol. Uh, this is a medical supply glycerol. I got it from a local drugstore. Again, I, I bought it from a drugstore because I know this is not a fake product. And uh, you can certainly also buy the food grade version of uh, glycerol, that's okay too. And this is the medical version, they're both fine really. And the last ingredient that you need is 20% hydrogen peroxide. Again, uh, buy it from the drugstore, it's a, it's a common disinfectant and a first aid item. Uh, and they are super cheap, for example, this bottle costs only 25 rupees or 25 bucks. So, yeah. And then, as I said, the last one is of course water. And with these three ingredients, you, it's super simple to mix your own batch of hand sanitizer. Now, just to be clear, in case you have access to a measuring cylinder, uh, you can just measure out each ingredients in its correct volume and mix them. That's fine too. Uh, in case you do that, you, for example, require 751.5 ml isopropyl alcohol, 98%, uh, 14.5 ml of glycerol, uh, 21.7 milliliters of 20 volume hydrogen peroxide that's this thing right here and the remaining that is 212.3 milliliter of distilled water uh, RO water uh, would do just as well so uh, that's one way of doing it however most households will not have access to a measuring cylinder of this sort so I'll give you an effective uh, solution uh, for that as well First, what you got to do is uh, draw out a scale which is proportional to the ratio of uh, each fluid that you have to mix. Take any piece of copy paper and draw out a straight, straight line from one edge. And then we are going to mark different points uh, at different distances from this, over, uh, this edge over here. So the first line that I have to draw is at a distance of 21.3 
uh, sorry, 21.2 millimeters from the edge, so 21.2 uh, approximately there. Uh, the next line has to be at 2.2 millimeters, that's one millimeter, 2.2 millimeter approximately there. Uh, the next one would be at 1.5 millimeters approximately, so yeah, right about there. And finally, the last line will have to be at a distance of 75.1 millimeter. So that's 75.1 millimeter. Okay. So here's what each of these lines mean. So the first line is water. The second line, that's actually for the hydrogen peroxide. This one stands for glycerol or glycerin and so the last one is of course alcohol. So now what you got to do is, oh by the way, uh, you can always check whether these lines are correct. If you measure, you should get exactly uh, 10 centimeters, okay? And now you draw a rectangle along so that it's uh, your marks are within the rectangle and then you cut along the edges like so now what you got to do is get a glass not just any glass these old-fashioned highball glasses uh, any glass will work as long as the sides of them are vertical so a wine glass or a fancy cocktail glass won't do but these sort of run-of-the-mill glasses are just fine oh by the way safety tip you're actually using uh, a kitchen utensils for a non-food use uh, once you're done that you don't want people to be drinking from it especially uh, if you have friends over your parents who might not be aware what you did with this glass so always put a label uh, whenever you have these cases it's just an important safety reminder okay so we got to fix this towards uh, on the glass of the on the side of the glass and we have to make sure that this is more or less vertical and uh, the beginning that's the start of the water over here has to align itself with the bottom of the glass not counting the thickness of the glass at the bottom so you leave aside that and maybe this is the point where the liquid will actually start so i have to align my uh, paper to that point and then I have to stick it to the side of the glass which I'm going to do although the chemicals that I'm using have very low toxicity I still recommend that whenever you handle uh, non-food chemicals you have some basic safety gear so for example I'm wearing simple neoprene gloves and uh, uh, safety glass I highly recommend you do that so what I have here is uh, basically RO water ideally you need distilled water agreed but RO water is a great stand-in and if you don't have an RO machine at home you can go ahead and buy any bottled water they are, uh, they are actually RO water so the first line I'm going to fill up with plain water the next active ingredient that goes into my mixture is hydrogen peroxide glycerol and the final ingredient of course is my isopropyl alcohol So my basic homemade hand sanitizer is ready. Uh, you now have to store this in a correct bottle. You cannot store this in a glass bottle because the hydrogen peroxide uh, reacts with the glass or I shouldn't say it reacts, uh, the glass uh, makes the hydrogen peroxide decompose a lot faster. These things actually have a short shelf life. So I suggest you make a fresh batch at least every month. Uh, that's where the, That way you always know you have the correct concentration of ingredients in your mixture 
uh, as I said, use a plastic bottle. And what I do is I always put an expiry date, which is one month from the date that I have mixed it. That way I know uh, when this thing is expired and I should get a fresh batch. So, give it a slight mix and we are done. So, now that you have seen me how to make a, a hand sanitizer, I thought that I will use the remainder of this video uh, to give you a little more information about the different chemicals that are used and what are its property. Uh, the real reason why I read up on each chemical separately was because I wanted to run some basic tests to, uh, to make sure that I have the right chemical. So the hydrogen peroxide, for example, uh, it's, uh, it's formula is H2O2 and it readily decomposes uh, itself into water and oxygen gas. Uh, and normally this happens very slowly, but in contact, when you put hydrogen peroxide in, uh, in contact with manganese dioxide, uh, it, it decomposes quite quickly and it liberates oxygen gas. And uh, you can definitely identify the, um, whether or not it's oxygen gas by putting a, a glowing splint of wood, it will relight. Uh, if you have a high school student uh, uh, around you, you can ask him, he, he or she will give you a better example, a uh, better explanation. Uh, the, the alcohol, it's very difficult to test for the alcohol, uh, other than the fact that it smells like alcohol and it evaporates from your skin pretty quickly. Uh, I highly recommend you don't do this, uh, but uh, you can light a small sample of alcohol to see how it burns. Uh, if it's ethyl alcohol, it will burn uh, with a very light, almost invisible blue flame. Uh, isopropyl alcohol tends to be a little more smoky than uh, your uh, ethyl alcohol. Glycerol, it's actually used as a food product, not this one. This is the medical kind. Uh, you have glycerols which are food safe and it's, it's not really toxic. In fact, although it's very difficult to chemically test for glycerol at home, uh, other than the fact that it's a very thick syrupy liquid, uh, but in case you have the food grade kind, you can give it a taste. It's actually, it tastes quite sweet. So these three ingredients uh, make up uh, the modern hand sanitizer. The alcohol obviously is the primary disinfectant that you use. Uh, the, the hydrogen peroxide is just an antiseptic which uh, improves the potency of the entire mix. However, uh, if you have uh, just alcohol on your skin, it will dry your hand out very quickly. So that's why the last ingredient is glycerol, which is uh, in the industry, it's called as a humectant, I believe. Uh, it basically preserves the moisture on your skin. And yeah, when I, uh, when I came up with this method of using a glass, I, I wanted to make sure that there's as little scope for error in the ratios while mixing as possible uh, because you don't want a household to mix a batch and then be assured that it works when in reality the, the mixture was not correct, there was probably not enough alcohol in the mix and so on and so forth. So I didn't want that to happen. So I think uh, this is a very safe option uh, to mix these ingredients. Again, if you have a measuring cylinder, by all means, go for it, it it's, it's a lot easier. But in case you don't, uh, you can still use uh, a household glass to get a reasonably accurate mix. Okay, so I think that's all for this video today. I will see you in my next video. Friends and followers, you have a nice day. Bye-bye.